What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 95 and it might be my final game in charge of AC Milan. We are heading into our first European final with Milan on the back of the Coppa Italia final loss to our rivals Inter by three goals too. That saw them wrap up a domestic double after they were crowned Serie A champions with a few games to spare. So, I've got to be honest, after being arsed to win the treble in season one, well, we didn't win either our domestic cup of a couple of league titles we could have won. Heading into the Europa League final against Liverpool, with our manager rating dropping a 70. If we don't win this, there is a chance I could be sacked. Now, in the Premier League, as you can see, the Reds finished in 8th place this season. They had a really poor season by their standards. Now, as this is the season finale, I'll do a little bit of a special on Brentford before we end the season off. But yeah, for Liverpool, not a great season uh, domestically this year, despite reaching the Europa League final. And I'll also briefly show you their team uh, right before we get into the Europa League final as well. Now, personally speaking, I, I don't think I will be sacked. I, I don't... I don't know I should do that. I don't think I will be sacked um, if we... Where am I going? Where's the Premier League? There it is. I don't think I will be sacked if uh, we don't win the... I'm doing this wrong. This is... How do I just read... Okay. Sorry, I'm all over the place today. <laughs> Can you tell I'm feeling nervous, guys? I don't think I will be sacked if we lose the game. I still think I'll keep my job, despite the poor managerial rating, despite having a trophy this first season. I think I'll still be here, but I'd say it's 50-50, maybe 60-40, I'll keep my job. I think it's just because it's the first season in charge, and whilst we are a five-star team, again, don't get me wrong, we've undergone a massive rebuild, and whilst the game probably won't take that into consideration, I still feel... Oh, he looks really good. I still... Oh, my word. Okay, I know who I'm going to try and stop in this game. I still feel as though the board will be lenient and give me at least one more year. Having said that, there's no guarantee. So my job may well depend on what happens in this Europa League final. So heading into the game, uh, obviously this is technically the game that follows on from the Cagliari game. Obviously the Coppa Italia final was the last episode, but the final Serie A game came afterwards. So technically we did win our last game. But heading into this one, my side is fully fit, it's fresh, it's raring to go. There are nerves, we are underdogs despite Liverpool's poor domestic season. And again, my job may well depend on getting a result in this, our first ever Europa League final. Now, we're playing in Germany. We're playing at Dortmund Stadium for this one. And I don't know if you can tell, guys, why I'm so nervous heading into this one. I've never been sacked before at club level in any of my saves for YouTube. Guys, you might well be witnessing history in the making right now. Let's just dive into it. It's the final game of the season, and my job might depend on it. Europa League final in Germany. Forza Milan. Now, I don't think I've played that badly in the Coppa Italia final. Those two late goals by Gutierrez made the scoreline look a lot more respectable. And what I felt was a more fair scoreline. Oh! <sighs> but I'll need to be better. Defensively, in this game, if we are to come through with a trophy to end the season, I will score tonight. I'll back myself to score. I should have scored there inside the opening five minutes. I back myself going forward. It's going to be all about whether I can stay tight defensively. Liverpool's front three is unbelievable. I, I fancy my chances on the offensive end. But defensively, that's where the trophy needs to be won tonight. <gasps> this game's got goals in it tonight. No doubt about it. Oh, how is it still nil-nil? Timmermans, Allison again. Three brilliant saves by the Brazilian. Come on. Tell you what, it's openings in that little back line, but 
There's openings in mine as well. And Santos. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, what's that? Oh. 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 Oh, my God. I tell you what, guys. There is absolutely zero chance this game finishes 0-0. <laughs> Both back lines are as shaky as Bambi on ice. There are going to be goals and goals and goals tonight, no doubt about it. It's that lad Volk who I'm most concerned about. They've got a great front three Liverpool, but it's it's that young new gen slash regen Volk. He, he looked unbelievable pre-game, and I think Liverpool are just looking for him at the moment. And why wouldn't they, considering his range of stats? Very risky, considering how bad I am at defending to do that. But it has led to a chance on the break here. Oh, oh my god, I should be 2 it up. Tell you what, if I don't win this game, and I don't score in this game, I deserve to be sacked. Timmermans well off target. Come on. Unbelievable. Timmermans has taken six shots in just over 20 minutes. This is mental. I must have had about nine in this opening half an hour alone. And yet we're still deadlocked. And like I said, there's, there's definitely goals tonight. The fact there hasn't been one yet, well, let's just say it's coming. But the question is, who's going to get the first? It's not Liverpool. Or it still could be. Oh, my God. That was a pass. That was a pass! Oh my, this is ludicrous. How on earth has the ball not crossed the line yet? That was a... Okay, don't need to say it again, but that was a pass! Oh, Alisson is just unstoppable! Alisson again! One, two, no! Allison is the best goalkeeper in this game. Another brilliant save. This is the most action-packed goal destroyed in the history of football. How on earth has neither team scored yet? I mean, I think we've been a slightly better team, but Liverpool themselves hit the woodwork twice. Oh my God! Allison! You know, I'm playing like my job depends on us winning this game. Alisson is playing like his life depends on winning this game. This is ludicrous. Three minutes to go, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to get angry. But I'm very close to losing my discipline here. Because we should be two or three and up. But I can see Liverpool going ahead against the runner play before the break. It's a glorious little one-two. That's a big tackle by Theo, and we'll get the danger away. With Keane. And Rob. That's a great first touch. Roberto! Gutierrez, get in! It's a brilliant run from Keane. But with Timmermans missing chance after chance, he says to his captain, his big bro, do it for me, do it for us. 10 in the Europa League and the biggest in the final. With virtually the final kick of what has been the most action-packed first half of the Europa League final ever. Milan in front, deservedly so. But if you think this game is done, think again. There's more goals in this one. And you can back that for sure. Oh, what a half. That's a great ball. That's a brilliant ball. Oh. Well, that's their second shot. Mike could have saved the near post. I've got to say, I called that one spectacularly well. I didn't mind bringing Mike out for that because there was no teammate in support. Oh, my God! He's the most eccentric goalkeeper I've used in this year's FIFA. Why would you come for that and then just stand there? I didn't call him out for that one. I didn't press triangle for that. Oh, where's the ball? <sighs> Can we just 
just end the game now, please? I can't take this. Uh, it's just over 25 minutes to go. And we're still leading by one here in Germany. But after that indecisiveness from Mike on the corner, after making a great save initially, I really don't know what to do right now because I'm, I'm trying to conserve energy a little bit. Just calm it down because this game has been played at 100 million miles an hour. But I don't know whether to just sort of try and sit on this one goal lead and try and defend it. Which I know he's asking for trouble against this Liverpool side with my poor defending. Or throw bodies forward and possibly concede an equaliser by chasing a second. Or maybe get that two goal cushion that should see the game out. I really don't know what to do. Just over 20 minutes to go. And this is going to be a very big decision from me here. Go for it. Go for the second. Go for the kill. Or sit on the one goal lead. Alright, so I've just made my tactical change. I quite often do this in games where I need to close out a slender lead. I'll bring on Leon Goretzka. For a bit of composure through the middle. That's gone, that's gone, that's gone, no! Oh my god! I thought I was in. First of all, I thought it was a goal kick. I swear that ball across the line. Well, it's a goal kick now, but Volk almost found the leveller. Jota's coming off. There's 10 minutes to go. Liverpool are going to start playing a very high press now. Have we got the composure to see this out? Despite all the chances, I don't see us getting a second. It all depends on whether I can stay tight defensively and hold on to this one goal lead. let Kermit into the room. <laughs> no! Oh no! Oh god no. Really scattered at the back. Positioning sense. We've got none of it at the moment. That's big from Quebec. Oh hello. Hello. This is the moment. This is the chance. No oh, I didn't to the wrong man. This is end to end. Come back, don't dive in, don't dive in. Oh no, I should have dived in. Oh, Fernandez coming out of nowhere for the tackle. <sighs> Do not pass the ball back to Mike. That's more like it. I can't break. I can't pause. I've won the Europa League. God, this will forever go down It's one of the most tense Europe League finals I've ever played. It should never have been this way. We should have won this with ease, but Roberto saw the gap, the defence parting like the Red Sea, and drills it past the brilliant Brazilian Allison. And his brace and 11th goal in the Europa League might well have kept my job. What a game! Heading into the game, I saw us as slight underdogs. Despite Liverpool's really tough season in England, they're an amazing team. With the pressure on my shoulders, I, I really thought this could go either way tonight. Instead, we turned up in Germany with a dominant display. And we should have won it more convincingly. We should have won it more comfortably. But we won it. My job was on the line. And we might well have just about kept it. Courtesy of the goal machine. The captain saving my bacon. Not for the first time. Milan. Europa League winners. What a thriller in Germany. I've said it before and I'll say it again against the AI on Ultimate in this FIFA. Good is not good enough. You have to be great and better than good. We definitely deserve the win. There's no doubt about that. We had a far superior side. Liverpool did have their chance though. It would work twice in the first half. One of which from a pass which almost snuck in. 
and Mike made a good save in the second half and almost gifted Liverpool a goal from a corner. But in the end, it's Roberto's brace, one either side uh, of, no, not either side of the half, but one right for half time and right for full time to see us come through with the 2 0 deserved victory in the Europa League final. And there's no doubt he's my man to match well. I will say, though, to be fair, that defensively in this game, I did feel as though I defended really, really well. I thought I shut down Liverpool's really good front three uh, really effectively in this game. But no doubt about it. Looking for the captain, the leader, the legend, the hero to potentially save my job. He stood up to the challenge and delivered, and then some. Milan, Europa League winners. There's a trophy in the cabinet. For the first time with our Italian Giants, my job may have depended on it. I think I've just about kept it. Yeah, I have to say, um, it was not quite as difficult as I was expecting. I mean, obviously, you know, it, it was tense. I think that's the best way of putting it. It wasn't as difficult, but it was certainly as tense as I was expecting. I really felt as though whoever got the first goal in this game were going to win it. So the fact it was us right before the break, it was such a huge luxury. Because again, Liverpool put the work twice in that first half, putting us under pressure in certain occasions. Thank just you. about squeezed home that first goal. And then once we did, I thought, right, second half, don't just sit on this. Get that second goal. And gladly we did. And once we got it, it was then too late for Liverpool to do anything about it. So there we are, Milan are Europa League winners. Rob stands alongside it. Captain leader, legend, hero. Surely keeps me in the job because my manager rating has not gone up. It remains at 70. I think that will be enough. We might have failed domestically, no honours in Italian football, but I do believe that Europa League will be enough to keep my job. I, I don't think I would have been sacked had we not won it, but there is that chance. It might well have happened you just never know, and I guess now we'll never know. So what we'll do to end the season off is do one recap of the Serie A tights, a table. Sorry, obviously you wouldn't have seen this because the Cagliari again came after the Inter Milan Coppa Italia final. I just played it off camera and put it uh, right at the beginning of the last episode. But Inter, as we knew, were champions. They only lost once all season long. There's no doubt about it. Whilst we were the top scorers this year, they had the best defensive record. They were the best team in Italian football. They deserved to win the Serie A. They were pole position throughout the entire season, really, as Lazio and Juve they go into the Champions League places, Cali are Europa League, Napoli Europa Conference League. And there's no doubt in my mind, if we are to win the Serie A or the Coppa Italia next year, we'll have to come through the holders into Milan. They're the best team in Italy right now. Frankly, we do have the best player in Italian football, though. That's Roberto Gutierrez. He won the Golden Boot this year with 31 and also won the assist title with 23 as well. If there was ever a chart or charts that showed Rob's importance to this team, well, you saw it in the Europa League final. You see it here as well. Mike won the Golden Glove with 16 clean sheets in 38. That's actually quite impressive, to be fair, considering how leaky my defense is. The fact he won the Golden Glove is, uh, is actually pretty impressive, to be fair. There's a run you through the other trophies, though. We'll start off with the uh, Coppa Italia. As we know, that was Inter Milan beating us in the final by three goals to two. However, the Europa Conference League has just been played. But the Champions League hasn't been played. Uh, Roma beat Wolves in the Europa Conference League final. Very interesting indeed. But as for the Champions League, that's going to be between... Oh, look at that. Blockbuster. The mega rich money boys. Manchester City versus Paris Saint-Germain. Well, Stan Rene go to the semis of the CL. Fair play to the French side. But it's Man City versus PSG. What I'll do is after I've simulated a few days in the calendar, right now on the screen I'll show you uh, who was the winners between Man City and PSG. So you'll see it on the screen for you right now. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll end with a final look at the squad and also Brentford's team as well. Now you would have seen Brentford finishing fifth uh, in the Premier League this year, but I'll show you their team as well um, and how it's changed over the season. As we know, they of course, uh, they of course sold Roberto to us, Ivan Tony left, Sean Pratt left, lots of lots of players left in the summer. I wonder how it looked after January, I don't know. So Justin Bailo is still there, as is David Rea. Um, okay, you got Justin and Lamptey still there, Niambe still there, Harry Maguire moved on as we remember. Ben White is still there as well. Uh, De Silva is still there, glad to see that. Tom Davis is still there as well. Uh, Lingard is still there, he'll retire as a B, I'm sure. And Didi and Maitland Niles on Yaker are also still there, as is Declan Rice, who was signed for them in the summer. Stanley Young is still there as well. Hlozek came in, and um, yeah, that is Brentford's team. Zolly Watkins is still there as well. Whew, I'll tell you what, guys, seriously, that Europa League final was mental. Absolutely mental. So, as I run you through the team then, one final time, basically. Now, this is how we end Season 1 as a five-star team. And moving into Season 2 of AC Milan, there's no doubt about it. Santos has been alright this year. Kabak's been alright this year. 
But I need some new defenders, man. There's no doubt about it. Fernandes at right back. I wouldn't say the experiment has failed. He's done all right, to be fair. But I'm not sure he'll be our first choice right back next year. But going forward, top scorers in Italy. No problem on the offensive end. We saw it in the Coppa Italia final. Our main concern is defense. So in the, in the summer, you best believe I'm looking for a big money signing, a center half, and possibly right back as well. So I run you through the full stats of the team in season one. I've got to say, I I wouldn't consider this a failure myself. I really wouldn't. The board will look at it and say it was a failure. Only winning one of the three trophies they wanted. But I wouldn't consider it a failure myself. Now this is our first season of AC Milan. They were a side on the brink of collapse. We had to do a complete rebuild. We're adapting to a new play style in a completely new division, in a completely new country. To me, this season was not a failure. I think it would have been had we not won a trophy. But we won the Europa League, so to me, that was the saving grace. I wouldn't call it a success, but I wouldn't call it a failure. It was what you call the warm-up, the introduction. And for our first season with AC Milan, I will take it. This is not the dream season with the treble I wanted. This is not the domestic double season I wanted. This is one trophy in the cabinet in this Europa League. But again, for our first year of AC Milan, what is a rebuild, what is a long-term project, I'm going to take this. I'll say as a first season, it could have been a hell of a lot worse we got some silverware in the cabinet. we just got to be thankful that this guy did not need an adaption period to life in Italy. Goodness gracious me. What a season from Roberto Gutierrez. 48 in 53. 26 assists to go along with it as well. I think this guy is becoming one of the best strikes in world football. And by the way, did he win the Coppa Italia Golden Boot? He did. Did he win the Europa League Golden Boot? He did! <laughs> I think it's the first time I've seen that. One of our players winning the Golden Boot in every competition we've been in. There's no doubt about it. If it wasn't Milan season, it was certainly Rob's. The captain made sure he delivered the silverware. He got the individual accolades and one team trophy as well. But for next season, moving forward with Milan, we're going to have to be a hell of a lot better, particularly on defence, if we're going to build on what was an OK at best. Season 1, where I just about kept my job. But that will end today's episode of Career Mode, guys. Massive thank you for watching the season finale. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the beginning of Season 2 of AC Milan tomorrow morning as we return of a quadruple episode upload weekend where we're going to need to spend big in the summer if we're to build on what was our OK Season 1 and challenge into Milan for domestic dominance. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the start of the new season. Very soon.